So the 2016 Symposium on Sex Offender Management is hosted by the SMART Office. The SMART Office is part of the Office of Justice Program. Most of what we do in the SMART Office is supporting states, territories, and tribes as they set up and uh, carry out their missions on sex offender management, sex offender registration, notification systems, et cetera. Um, but a lot of what the SMART Office does to get to that point is supports the research agenda. It supports uh, the develop, development of the understanding, the development of the insights and the reports, but also the dissemination of those. And so the 2016 symposium for us is a really good opportunity to bring together practitioners, therapists, and even academics so that they can look at what's the state of play as far as the research agenda and how do we build upon that going forward. Like any good uh, symposium or, or conference, it's it's a way to to get new information that your regular day to day job won't doesn't necessarily um, allow you to accomplish, um, as well as as meeting different folks um, from different perspectives that allow us to enrich what we do and um, make it more effective and more useful. The amount of resources that are presented and the ability to network with the contacts that we've only been able to talk to over the phone is just so amazing. It's a, it's a great two days. I find a lot of us have the same similar problems as far as uh, uh, tracking sex offenders, sex offenders leaving. Uh, what did you do in your, your state or what did you do in your territory? We did this and then that's where I meet other people or, hey, wait a minute, if it worked for you, it could work for me. Oh, no, that won't work for me. If it worked for me, it might work for them. We've seen such tremendous improvement in the area of sex offender registration, monitoring, and public notification that we point directly to the uh, enactment of the Adam Walsh Act. We've seen states and tribes and territories have much better communication. We've seen the U.S. Marshals step up in an amazing way to make sure there's no place in this country that a non-compliant sex offender can hide. The problem is the person who you trust to go out on a date with, who you walk home with, the person who you have training your children in gymnastics or at school. The problem are the people around us, not necessarily this horrible unnamed predator. The Marshal Service role under the Adam Walsh Act is three parts. Um, the, the first role in, in that capacity would be to assist state and local jurisdictions in identifying and uh, locating and apprehending fugitive sex offenders. Uh, sex offenders can be deemed a fugitive under the act without an actual warrant being in place. If we can just show that, that an offender is non-compliant in their registration requirements, then they are considered to be a fugitive. The uh, second role that the Marshal Service plays under the Act is to investigate alleged violations of the registration requirements of convicted offenders and uh, to present those cases to the U.S. Attorney's Office for potential prosecution. And the third role uh, the Marshal Service plays under the Adam Walsh Act is to assist jurisdictions in uh, the identification, location of uh, displaced offenders in the event of a natural or man-made disaster such as Hurricane Katrina, uh, Sandy, things along those lines. We've come a long way in the 10 years since the Adam Walsh Act was passed. We've seen uh, tribes, for instance, closing that loophole uh, across the country where uh, pedophiles and others uh, in the sex offender community were actively seeking to move on to reservation land, thinking that they could avoid registration requirements because of sovereignty. For us, our individual challenges um, for the Shiner Apo tribe is having a lack of law enforcement. We don't have our own trouble. Um, police department. We use the Bureau of Indian Affairs as well as the Marshals Program. The 2016 Symposium on Sex Offender Management has several different goals which might actually sound contradictory at first glance. Um, if you look at the goal of getting better information on how to investigate and prosecute sex offenders, um, that might seem like it's contradicting one of the other goals which is how do you bring people back into communities? How do you bring people back in to families where they might have abused one of their own family members? How do you create a therapeutic basis? Um, how do you create research that helps them succeed in life? I, I think that with the onset of registry, which actually predates Adam Walsh and goes back to the Wetterling Act, um, the idea of registry and then public notification of registry 
um, was a challenge for sex offenders because it took them out of a place of anonymity and confidentiality in a treatment environment and, and it led other people to be aware of who they were and what they had done. And so I think offenders have had to learn how to adapt to that environment um, and still figure out a way to successfully reintegrate into a community. We have to look at the whole sex offender, uh, not simply what they did that day, but everything about them, uh, not demonize them, but understand them so that you can bring accountability and prevention into that life.